welcome back. It's time. A moment many of you may have thought we would never get to, but this is game five. This is the deciding moment between the LCL's Unicorns of Love and the LEC Splice. And don't forget it, European fans, it is not the LEC, it is the LCL. There will be no Europe's fourth seed lol after this one. There will be nothing but embarrassment for the LEC if Unicorns of Love can come out on top. A momentous matchup, and Ender, this is the pick band that will decide it all. It absolutely is. Now coming in, Splice have chosen to return to the blue side, and what this means for the Unicorns of Love is actually they're going back to the original strategy. I think we might see the Pantheon left open, because otherwise they would have to ban Pantheon. They'd have to ban Kiana. Do they ban the Zai? There's Pantheon. so many power picks. Splice can't play it. Splice can't play the Pantheon, Dracos. The Kiana's still up. Do they ban the Kiana? It's either that or the Kennen. And like if you're wondering why one. we're so intense in drafts, most of the games have been pretty readable from the draft phase, pretty predictable in how they would play out. And if Unicorns of Love come out of this with an advantage, they come out with another super favorite topside matchup, things may just go in their favor. Unicorns, they thought they were going to trade the Kiana for Pantheon. They absolutely had to think that was going to be the play. They have limited Visit Chachi's champion pool one more time. That worked wonders, forced them onto the Shen and helped them get the win in game four. But Kiana also helped them get that win. And now that could very easily go into the hands of Zerse. And he could take that for another win. And the Lee Sin, the hover over here. Some early game power, hopefully to match that of Kiana if this does go into the hands of Zerse. But instead, it will be the Renekton. Boss pulled so far ahead in the previous matchup, was able to contribute so much more than the Shen in the mid to late game. And this is where we wonder, can Visitachi steer away from the Shen, show the Nico such a strong counter pick into that Renekton or perhaps the Rumble I mentioned in the last series. If you're going to have a, a, a Kiana in the jungle, you know, could still flex around, but you definitely need to have some magic damage to bolster around that. I'd love to see him visit either of those two champions and draft it early, otherwise face more bans being thrown his way. The Syndra's still up. It is. Syndra, the other champion, has been taken away so many times because it is a flex. It is Inax or No Man's who can take that champion. It disrupts so much of the draft. But with the Zaya now locked in, a lot of that power is gone. I just wonder if Kabi can play the mages in the bottom lane. You know, we did see him play he mages did. in the playoffs in the spring split, but never the Syndra. Syndra plus Thresh, a very strong bottom lane. Syndra Nautilus could do similar things. Here we go. On command, there it is. When push comes to shove, there is nothing left. Now, the real hide. question, though, is can they flex it? Can this go into the bottom lane, or is this a humanoid can. exclusive pick? I guarantee you they did not want to pick it to groups. They did not think that they would be pushed this far. But now it goes. Everyone has been practicing this Syndra in solo queue. But once again, the Morgana looks like it can go over the hands of Unicorns of Love. The Black Shield has disrupted so much. Black Shield to try and answer a potential Syndra in the bottom lane. I think it obviously does well against the Nautilus, can absorb the initial hook and make it so he can't lock down the potential Zaya, but also against Syndra. One of the reasons why she's so good into something like this Zaya is just one scout of the week can instantly force Zaya to pop her Feather Storm. Now you can hold on to that if you have Morgana alongside it. Still remains to be seen where that pick does go, but now the Unicorns can decide to limit the top lane pool if they want. Now, in the last game, that wasn't actually the strategy for them. They went for double mid lane bans, LeBlanc plus a Kali, two of the blind pick options that Humanoid has enjoyed throughout the play-in so far. And this, to me, says that they think this could be going to the bottom lane. They still want to remove any potential blind pick options for Humanoid. They're banning the Akali themselves on the side of Splice. A bit surprised to see it. We'll see what the final option is. Here's from Unicorns of Love, the last ban that they're going to get. The other thing is the Nanasic needs a jungler. Now, of course, he got a pretty free early game on that Karthus against the Nocturne. I don't think it would be the same against a Kiana. Kiana, a lot more damage. The gap closed to try and fight you in the early game with strong lanes around oh, it. They're going to push Visitor Chachi even deeper into his pool. They don't <laughs> even want to see the Shen. It's got to be the Rumble. It has to be the Rumble here. I think Rumble plus Nautilus, Rumble plus Kiana, very strong synergy. I would love to see. Be also a bit of a call out there. Obviously, the wind wall can be very disruptive to a lot of what these champions want to get done. Cinder especially, with that unleashed power, block all of those orbs coming their way. Now, Unicorns probably looking for a jungle pick for a Nana Sick. Went for the Renekton earlier. Renekton plus Black Shield. Or sorry, uh, Skarner plus Black Shield. Could always be strong, but it's going to be a return to the Karthus for him. Again, I don't think this is as free of a pick against a potential Kiana jungle or whatever Zerse chooses to take in this game. So we have to watch how Zerse can work with his lanes, but always Karthus is going to be the fastest clearing jungler in the game. You have to do something against him or he will out-level you and out-damage you and out-scale you. 
and turn into that late game monster that we saw in Anisic be in game four. Final picks coming through. Sindra looks like it will be committed to the mid lane. Kiana as well to the jungle. The final pick will go into the hands of Visa Chachi. This is such a telling moment here for Chachi. You know, you know he loves to go for some pocket picks. The Cho'Gath that lost game one will return for him in the top lane. It's a frontline champion that can try to absorb damage, can try to buy space for Kabe, but I can't help but feel like there were better options for them in this game. I still stand by the fact that Rumble would be an excellent answer for him. But there is magic damage to be had in both mid lane and bottom lane with that Kai'Sa. The Orianna. Once again, the double magic damage threat for this team. No longer coming with the bot lane, no mans on the Orianna. Syndra Ori, not a matchup I thought we'd see in the game five, but a classic to be certain. Such a strange comp. Unicorns Love do not have a lot of team fight engage. It pretty much relies on landing bindings or using the Wall of Pain or a Rogue Shockwave to find multiple members, while Spice have so many more active tools to attack the Unicorns of Love. Strong frontline, strong backline DPS as well. I think as far as well-rounded team compositions go, Splice definitely load into this game with an advantage, but I feel like certain elements of the Unicorns of Love, you feel like the time is ticking against Splice, where there's a Karthus in a jungle that's going to outscale and do so much damage. It's going to be really hard for them to pin down Inax's uh, Zaya in these games as well. Splice don't have the same dive tools that they had in game four. So if they come up with a lead, I think they have a lot of good options. If they don't come out of the early game with an advantage, it's going to be much more difficult for them to press their will on UOL. Early game, inevitably the story for both of these teams. And it is a brief pause, a quiet moment before we get into game. But it is game five, it is silver scrapes. It is the final moment for one of these teams. It won't be quiet for long, Dracos. I've heard the crowd all day chanting for Splice, cheering on the Unicorns of Love. When it comes down to the final moments, game five, when one team will go home, the other moves on to groups, you will hear them. Whether you are a UOL fan or a Splice fan, your team needs you now. Berlin, let me hear you! and there is pressure in the LEC studio tonight, host of the world's play-ins. For an LEC team may be eliminated here and an LCL team may advance. We will find the victory in game five, the moment question on our minds, but inevitably our sights are set back to the jungle. The first game, Ananasik got the better of Xerse, it was game four and it made all the difference. Can he do the same in game five? Already seeing some moves coming out of him in the early levels. We did see the invade, the split map. I think he's going to try the same thing here with the Renekton up against the Cho'Gath. You expect Cho'Gath can get the push on early, but the level one fight certainly goes in favor of Karthus. That's what we're going to see. The late walk-in around the 30-second mark to steal away the enemy blue buff. This time, Splice don't have any vision to see what is actually happening. Very likely, Unicorns drop a ward of their own on their own blue buff to make sure there can't be a response. Play. Chachi walking around the corner. He now knows. Do you level stun? No, not going to go for anything else. Just a bit of poke before the lane phase starts. They can split the map, they can isolate this Cho'Gath on the top side. But I, we just have to keep our eyes on this Kiana. This pick has looked so incredibly powerful across all of plans since release, really. And now Zerse just running into the enemy jungle, ready to continue his clear. The red buff will keep him healthy. So he will be seen this entire time. Now Unicorn's bot lane, even though you have the range of Morgana, you have, in theory, the stronger pushing bottom lane, will allow the wave to crash into them because they know an is top side. They can then walk into their own jungle and try to delay, but that's why we have more scared. Walking up himself to make sure that Xerxes is free to clear this. He has the smite. Trying to at least mitigate some of the early game impact. Ah, uh, but he can't get anything else. See, Xerxes lost his entire top side jungle, was only able to respond with the blue. This is what we talk about, the weakness of Kiana in those early levels until she can get that first reset off her bit. Uh, under her belt, and then she does a whole lot more damage when it comes to looking for these early ganks, when it comes to looking for 2v2s around mid lane, because I think that's where Splice have so much power, especially around that level 6 mark. No man's rocking the TP, not a combat summoner no, spell, not, so it not, certainly not, goes your way. Rocking the TP as well as the phase rush. Up against Humanoids Electrocute. You can tell the goals for both of them. One wants to scale, one wants to be safe in this mid lane, the other wants to kill. 
Boss continuing to threaten here in Mizuchachi. Quick proc of the Conqueror. Scatter of the Week not quite connecting the way he wants it to. Will still force the flash out from No Man's, respecting the all-in potential of the Kiana. Boss. Wow. A very close lane, but Boss just continues to press in. Mizuchachi actually going all the way back to base. Started with a with a Doran's Ring as opposed to the Corrupting Potion, so... Those all-in fights not going his way. We'll have to use this teleport to get back in the lane. Maybe thinking a dive oh, was connects. possible. connects. Threads it through the minions. Edward now in trouble. The Black Shield stops any follow-up. Others do come back, but massive trade in the favor of the Splice bot So lane. this is actually a huge loss for Chachi up on the top side of the map because you saw with, with all of the information we had, it was definitely possible for him to stay underneath that tower, but because he knew the map was split and Xersei had to play for the bottom side of the map, he was chunked after that play, thought a dive could come in. We saw last game how powerful Karthus is in any kind of dive situation, so he's going to be out of a teleport, whereas Boss can walk back to lane with the Doran's Blade on top of the shield, and with that lead, now Unicorns can maybe look to make plays around the map. You know, find that teleport into the bottom lane if you get a deep ward. That gives you room now to have the numbers advantage and punish Chachi and punish Slice for the weaker early level one play, for having the map split against them and losing that spell. And the biggest concern if you're Splice fans is that you've seen what this Kiana can do in the first few levels when Xersei gets rolling. And of course, it's considered to have a little bit of a weaker clear, but the gank setup is incredible. Xersei has yet to find a significant advantage outside of the flash on the top side. Meanwhile, Anonistek has been pulling ahead in terms of jungle CS. Three camp lead, and now Chachi, once again, the one in trouble. Most likely going to have to burn the flash. Your wall of pain should come out in a moment, trying to isolate him. He's trying to buy as much time as he can. He knows he's going down the flash. Is it going to be enough for Visit Chachi? Can he make it out? The Skittles connect to the flash forward. Oh. The, the first blood to the Karthus, and already another engage on the bottom side. Unicorns of Love pulling ahead. Or Scarin. Does he want to look for it? Ooh, flash for flash there. Good trade, support for carry. It's the same time, beautiful gank in the top lane. Now Xersei looking mid. Wants to get in, hit confirms it. No man's in trouble. Has to run for the hills. Is he going to be able to sidestep? He walks back in. Oh. He dodges. No man's. No oh. man's. Not enough. Humanoid lands the scatter of the week. They will find a kill back in return. This entire series has been a war of the junglers. Dracos, and we're seeing it one more time in Anasik with a time with a perfectly timed gank up on the top side. Wave pushing away from Chachi. He's horribly exposed. Xersei two visits into mid lane, one to get the flash, one to get the kill. Even when he is denied in the early game, Xersei finds opportunity to make the plays happen. You see all the control wards on the top side of the river near that middle lane. It just tells you no man needs attention to try and clear that away and get himself some safety in this lane because you look at this return to base, no man has TP. In theory, you're supposed to have a lead. You're supposed to have a, goal, uh, a better reset. Instead, it's a lost chapter, just a fairy charm and some boots on the other side as we get one more look at this gank. Is it Chachi, as we said, lane horribly frozen against him and he doesn't have a jungler there to help him push it out. And the most you can really hope for is trade flash for flash in that exchange, and he does manage to do so, forcing Bla uh, Boss to flash after him, waits for the slow on the wall to fall away. But here, this is the gank we were waiting for, for the Kiana. Just about impossible to dodge that snare when she uses the audacity as well. And No Man's admittedly fancy feet, but... Syndra, eventually going to find it. Yeah, and, and what these plays ultimately come down to is really good wave management from Humanoid in the mid lane to freeze it on his side and to call for Xersei to come through, as well as Boss calling, hey, this lane is pushing away from Chachi. He might step up and try to hit these next couple of minions. Nanasik can easily run on in. Now he's ticked over to level 6 as well, so any sort of 2v2 fight where he is not present is going to immediately swing in the favor of Unicorns. And interesting, too, you can see... Kabe once again getting the better of Inax on the bottom side when the Heimerdinger is not present. No Man needs to back off as Norse Garen is here as well. I think trying to predict on that one pulls him back in, knowing he can win the trade. Phase Rush will be blocked so he can walk away, but now they know the support is missing from the bottom side. Unicorns of Love maybe can get a little bit of pressure back here as Ananasek, for what feels like the first time in the game, shows his face on the bottom side. Just of the look at the river. There are five splice control wards all the way across. That's insane. Here, obviously Nanasek with a big lead already in this game, but doesn't have the same level of support from his lanes to be able to put down that vision. And Nanasek also maybe just a little bit scared to walk into River by himself. Kiana, a whole lot more mobile, safer on her own. Try and put down that vision. Same thing when it when you consider Norse Garen versus Edward. Norse Garen, big beefy guy. He can walk in, he can put down the vision. Same cannot be said for that Morgana. Yeah, and checking it across the map, I mean, Karthus has a significant farm advantage, but the rest of the map actually going very much in the favor of Splice. You can see on the bottom side of 10 CS lead, the top lane that was supposed to be so strong, where Fizzichachi was supposed to be forced back onto a weak pick, is actually farming quite comfortably as the Renekton. The passive from Cho'Gath making this lane a lot healthier. However, they do give up the Ocean Drake, a big advantage to the side of UOL as they move later in the game. Can't help them 
get away from some of these plays. But Xerxes and Norskaren still fishing. And Axe has to be careful. He can't really stand next to that wall against the likes of a Kiana. Remember, there's still a TP advantage for Boss on the top side of the map, too. So Spice's duo definitely need to play a little bit safer. Let the lane just come on in towards them. They've been dominating in this 2v2 so far. That's safe to say in terms of CS and pushing up that lane to be able to knock down a tower plate for themselves. So sometime on the defensive, not going to be too much of a cost for them. Sort of looking forward into this game, though, it... it it's a hard one to call in terms of scaling because you consider there's a lot of there's a lot of threat when it comes to the later stages of the game on both sides. You know, Zaya versus uh, the Kaisa both pump out a whole lot of damage. Humanoid, a lot of single target damage on that Cinder. AoE favoring the side of No Man's. Both junglers scaling pretty well when it comes to the amount of damage they can output. But I think that the safety and the reliable damage does side with the Unicorns of Love when you consider that they have the Black Shield to keep themselves safe, multiple defensive tools as well with the Zaya Ultimate, and then the AoE options, too. are going to be pretty crucial oh, for them. Oh, that was good. <laughs> Pulls uh -oh. it back, though. Blast Cone's there. Humanoid going to try to take it one out to safety. Instead, steps forward, just ult on Anasik. Knocks it back. Cersei's there as well. Can just ult into the wall. Anasik now running for his life. Boss is there to back him up. A crazy exchange in the jungle. Ulti now coming out. I don't think anyone's low enough. Same thing happened last game, though. Oh! Humanoid! Forced to heal away. Good sidestep. Getting the flash from No Man's as well. That's really ideal for the side of Splice. This is a major swing for Unicorns because Norskaren left bottom lane and now Inax is cashing in on these plates on the bottom side of the map trying to even up the gold. Norskaren may be looking for the wraparound here. They're not quite going to be able to find it as Boss goes all in. Is it going down to visit Chachi? I don't think this is... Huh? Conqueror's now coming out and Anasik is on the way up. The knockup is there. Going to stop Boss from pushing any further. They can get wave pressure here, but they can't get much else. They're saying now on the bottom side. The uh -oh. Black Shield's going to start to fall away. Inox has ultimate available. Flash as well. Good dodge out there. Can't pull the feathers back into Norskaren, but Norskaren won't overstay as welcome. And it's fights everywhere. Visitachi going for it. He does Ooh. manage to get him the Skittle. Now going to connect the Flash in. Visitachi gets out. Heroic moment for the Splice top one. Unreal. One more time. Visitachi pulling off the 1vx plays right there's bot lane. Going in. Kave needs to get out. But meanwhile, there's a Kiana on the backside. Inax has to be careful. Finds the snare. Finds the lockup. Now the lockup is there. He manages to use the stopwatch. Buys a bit more. Kave trying to finish it off. But the Flash out will take him to safety. Well played. Both sides. Outplays coming out across the board. Inax, with all the invulnerabilities right there, is able to survive. Will eventually be denied all of the minions going in towards that bottom lane tower. So if you like, Splice are going to be the team that wins out when all is said and done here with Kabi picking up so low money. This game is so incredibly tense because I felt like all our other games were, were fairly decided in early game. Even though the gold lead in, in a lot of them wasn't much more than about one and a half thousand. Oh! Kabi. He's fast enough. But the, but the thing is, in this game, it's felt like both junglers have, have sort of gone blow for blow, and we've seen multiple outplays coming through from these lanes. This is the first game where it does not feel clear-cut inside of the early game, as we see this attempt one more time. Norskaren just walking straight into the binding, into the all-in, and then without the minions. Actually, because Unicorns of Love, they walk forward, the minions pull their aggro away from the tower, so it means that... Oh, actually, those are those min their minions. That's, That's all right. fine. <laughs> it worked out. I thought it was next level, but it wasn't. They still got the outplay. Absolutely did. Just going back to that point you made earlier. I actually want to hold that thought, because No Man's looks like he might just oh walk my. in face first into a gank. Big damage comes from the center. That's the stun. Cersei goes in, tries to ult, but just sombreros himself. And Anonasek is just left watching. It doesn't stop. Flashes out right there. Humanoid with the, with the good center mechanics, popping the ultimate first to put so many orbs on the ground to make the Scout of the Week almost unmissable onto a flashless no man's. He went for the early Merc treads, but it's not enough to keep him alive in this lane. You can see mid lane absolutely blowing up. Humanoid already with the completed Luden's Echo and just constant pressure in this lane. This is gonna be the worry for Unicorns, even though they have the gold lead because mid lane has been broken open. Splice should be able to have the first reactions toward any of these side lane plays in the future. And Zerzai just continues to hover around the bottom side. No ulti available. But Humanoid's on the way down too. Edward and Inax need to get out of there. They're going to give up the Rift Herald for this one. If they die, it'll be a fine trade, but they cannot afford to go down here. Here we go. Oh, North Scary now going to be in trouble. Looks like they're going to grab at least one. That's one kill. NX now going to get locked out. Edward should be taken down next. The flash out to safety. Don't think it's going to be enough, but he manages to lock down Kavi into the tower. Cersei, though, the hero to tank it for him. How much are they going to be able to trade for this, though? Because the Nanasic goes ahead and picks up the Rift Herald, they're going to drop that immediately to the top lane to secure first tower. There's no way Splice with just two members down bot side can out push. 
Oh, it's the, the question. TP comes TP. in. It's in Axe. He has no flash. He has no ult. He's in dead. Axe, what are you doing? Caught out. Where's my boy Sam Kobe Hartman Kensler to tell me about that TP? It sucked. <laughs> He'll do. <laughs> Unfortunate in the game five to be certain. The good news is they'll break the top lane tower. Unicorns will up, hold on to a small but notable gold lead. The Splice will match up the Cloud Drakes for scaling. And honestly, just such a close game. Vizichachi doing his best to clear this one out. Stunned up and honestly gets some good damage down. The Choke had very much in trouble. Conqueror coming through. Vizichachi is still alive! Vizichachi! Trying to oh, oh. What? Okay, ulti? He has no mana! Ananasic has no mana! He needs to go into the jungle to get mana. He can't do it, there's no time. That, Chachi has had a rough series. They've thrown every ban that they could at him in game four and in game five, but he has been doing very well this game and that is just further highlighting the point. He dodged every Skittle. He lived, oh, Sliver, I can't wait to see that report. It's <laughs> just unreal. Game dead, even locked as turret plating does go down. Now, right now, lane assignment a little bit all over the place. As Humanoid is actually the one pushing up in topside. He does have the vision to cover himself, but no tower will always mean that he is exposed. This is the replay. Vizichachi trying to hit the eye. Doesn't realize the Nana Six right there, so he takes so much damage right off the bat. Then, where's the, where's the Jukes? He feasts the Herald. Juke one. He's just autoing. Anansic has no mana at this point. He's not even juking all the skills. He's juked one, and then Anansic just realized he can't auto attack him to death. Boss tanked two more tower shots. He absolutely could have hit that, but No Man's now has to run for the hills. Edward is luckily there to cover him. 11 turret plates to UOL. You see the difference there in the game, but the gold is still dead even. That's the CS discrepancy in the individual lanes. Almost 40 for Kabe in his favor. So projecting into the next five to 10 minutes, it feels like Splice always have the better tools to play on the offense. That means walking into the enemy jungle, getting pushed through mid, primarily because of their strength in the 2v2 and the mid lane matchup, as well as the ability to face check very easily with things like uh, Norskaren's Nautilus. They can always walk into the enemy jungle while feeling relatively confident with themselves. That's why we see them taking this top lane tower virtually uncontested. Boss just trying to really run down and see if he can catch out Humanoid. But Unicorns Love, they're going to be hard-pressed to find pressure because while I do think, especially in siege scenarios and when they're controlling uh, areas around objectives, they're super powerful with all their poke and, you know, four range threats trying to pump out damage. Splice moving together as a unit, threatening the 5v5, is always going to be the stronger team able to force their way into enemy territory. And you really just cannot afford to split up against this Splice lineup. A lot of threats that can just leap onto you in an instant. Visit Chachi like right now this. running down in Axe. And Axe needs to make his way out of this one, has to dodge as much damage as possible. The rest of the team is here. He's forcing the ult out. Kiana on the way in as well. You all are just going to walk away here. I mean, all that for a Righteous Glory is a pretty <laughs> good deal. They do give up the Kiana ult too. That's going to be a big cooldown, but again, without Inax having his ultimate, he must go into the mid lane. You can't side lane on Zaya without that R button. So it'll be him and No Man's contesting over CS. And this is why I think the lane assignment is going uh, really in favor of Splice, because Humanoid, even though it seems a little bit greedy, he's in the side lane. Whereas I think it's much harder for Unicorns to play all three lanes at the moment. Splice definitely are, and even if they only play two lanes, they're denying a Cho'Gath. And Vizichachi isn't going to be too sad about losing out minions himself. He already has his Righteous Glory. That's about all you need. Oh, surprise Karthus. More like surprise Kiana. Ananasic now has to run for the hills. No ulti, Kirti though. He doesn't want to commit. Vizichachi, Karthus goes out of range. He can't get anything else. Edward now has to run. They're moving in to try to pull him back, but a clean flash out from Kabe. This is exactly what I was talking about. It's so much harder to face check with Edward. Now Norskaren, he went too deep. Oh, but not enough, not even enough time to connect there. He got the kill, then walks into the river by himself. No one around him. Meanwhile, Humanoid still pushing top lane. Inax without ultimate might just die. Flash this, just gets one shot. Humanoid on a rampage. Inax. Ultima snakes under his tower, but can his team come and reply? Humanoid, not much mana, no ultimate. This could be a big shutdown. What else can he get done? Anana Six steps in. Double AP threats versus the single of Humanoid. They will take him down. Shut down over to No Man's, but the tower still falls. In the heat of the moment, these teams are losing track of cooldowns, are losing track of when and where to pressure on top of the map. This is just one example as Anana Six jumps straight in on towards Xerxes. Xerxes without the ultimate, though, is unable to get the kill, and Jachi tries his best. But this is the catch on towards Edward, again, walking forward, not able to preemptively use that black shield to dodge away from Norskaren's damage. And Norskaren, he has his ultimate, so I think he thinks he can chase 
for the kill, but Kabi very clearly didn't want any part of that. He just lost track that Zerse, or rather Nanasik, was in the area and, and was able to make that rotation through the river very, very easily. And as we get later and later in the game, the stakes of each and every single fight or pick start to matter more and more. You can see a scaling build coming in from the Oriana, building towards that Seraphs, as well as it would appear to be Leandris, wants to slowly but surely cut through the composition. So No Man's winning the 1v1 right now, but I worry for him when Vizichachi pops the Righteous Glory, and if a jungler ever shows up, still TPs on both those players. Infernal Drake spawning in six seconds. Who can land the first blow? That's going to be so telling in this fight, because all Unicorns want to do is chunk and poke before it starts. Aw, stashing over the wall. The Black Shield is there. Zosei trying to retreat. Multiple members of his team locked up. Kabe can now go in, but he has to wait. Holds on for a brief moment. The Disengage is there. Inax can look to fight in the pinch. They can't step forward. Take stock. It's an ultimate ops. There's a huge team fight cooldown, and then the survivability of boss's dominance here. I think that's gonna be a roughly even trade. Xersei just trying to steal, sneak in for another good smite, but not able to do it. Wall of pain, huge there to block this out. Kabe on the backside, maybe they get something done. Edward looks like he will be sacrificed for this one. Big damage comes in, a decent shockwave, but there's really no follow up there. Kabe now stepping Ooh. forward. Inax needs to flash out to safety. They have gotten the Drake from the side of UOL, but it doesn't look like they're going to be getting anything else. Really clever there from Splice. They realized that they could fight in that tight quarter. There's not a lot of room to maneuver and dodge away from the Scatter of the Week from Humanoid. But they do lose the Infernal for it. Definitely going to go the way of Unicorns of Love in terms of who won that trade overall, especially when you consider this series and the context of all five of these games. Every single one of them pushed so late with multiple problems closing out in the mid games. So you always favor the scaling advantage of an Infernal over that immediate gold value. Just one more time in this play. Vizichachi tries to find Edward. The Black Shield is burnt initially. Norskaren just barely missing. And then they realize all those orbs on the ground. How do you miss the Scout of the Week? It's just not possible. Able to finalize that kill on Edward and burn the flash on Inax. And now the question to be asked is, how do Unicorns of Love spread out across the map? Because we've seen this so many times throughout just this game alone, is when they try to play all three lanes, Inax, especially when he doesn't have his cooldowns, is getting punished. Or, you know, No Man's can't really go top lane by himself because, of course, Splice could bring a jungle and just run him down with that Righteous Glory. So they have to be very mindful what they're doing and where they're placing their members on this map. And I think the better strategy almost always is going to be to try to group up and put down vision first so you can track the opponent junglers. Then you can go farm freely in side lanes. And just such a tense game. You all have to be very careful about grouping up in these pinches. It's a similar story for Splice, however, against the likes of Azaya. Boss stepping in the midst of the enemy team. Forced to burn his ult for nothing. A bit of a fumble there. So watching in these fights, you always have to remember about the finishing power of the Karthus. Karthus very likely not going to fall down at the start of fights. He's been playing safely enough to not get caught out by Norskaren or Humanoid. Edward, Fishing. though. Binding does connect. Zerse stepping forward with the Grass Blade. Can use it to close a bit of distance there. Splice have all the tools to initiate fights and get that initial pick and, and try to knock people down. But Unicorns of Love have the ability to turn around their fights with Inax, with No Man's the Nana Six. So they must strike true with their first attack for Splice, otherwise Unicorns will always be able to turn things around right in their face. The, the consistent damage, the damage in an elongated fight is very much in the favor of UOL. It's a 3v4 in the mid lane. Splice could try to fish for something here. Xerxes is going to lock up Boss. Won't be able to find anything else. A slow siege here in mid. Zaya finally on the way down. Edward will be here as well. Uh -oh. Looks like ooh, Oriana. Just barely able to get that out in time. Maybe can't make his way out of this one. So much damage comes in, though. Kabe and Humanoid are Cersei? 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 Good question. Is able now to make it out. They are going to be able to break the tower. Here comes a bit of damage with a heal there to mitigate it. Still so close to finding the kill. And Anasik still searching that big Requiem. Of course, he's now level 12, you know, finished off that Morellanomicon. Not a ton of healing to deal with on the other side. Not nearly as snowballed as he was in that game number four. But speaking of snowballed, Humanoid is in that so one, one shotting territory. He is one shotting. And that's how fights should work for Splice. You get that first attack. You don't actually have yeah. to commit everything if you can just burst down one target. Then you can take those longer fights. Cersei was getting a little hypey right there, trying to come around the corner and land a big ultimate, but we'll be able to survive there after burning his flash. And this one, once again, ridiculous how close that was. But I got it. You just got to say, like, you can look at that kill, and of course it goes over to Kabe, and he's happy to have the gold. But that was mostly Cinder damage. If anyone is ever isolated against this team, they just get one shot quite easily. 
He so far had he even has the time to stop for more defensive items like the BV. These games have so often come down to big Baron fights. We're now 23 minutes into the game. Pressure on these teams. Again, like this is the game that decides whether or not you stay alive in the tournament. Can't even imagine how nerve-wracking it is to be on the stage right now with, with that advance just so close in your grasp. Chachi's keeping up the pressure on the side. He himself not a big source of damage, but obviously can set up for the rest of his team. Trying to buy more time. Ever really doesn't do anything to help clear the wave. Ba even Boss actually getting chunked out. No Man's caught off on the side. Kabi can leap in if he needs to, but won't get marked. Unicorns just don't have the ability to force. That's why these sieges are absolutely deadly. Splice stacked away, but now No Man's might be caught. No Man's pulling back. Kabi now going in, but he gets pulled back. The Kiana caught out. Zerzei trying to buy time. Good stun on the Wind Blast there. You all just pulling back, and Splice slowly but surely pulling ahead. The gold is dead even, but Splice always going to have pressure on the map because they threaten the stronger initiation. They threaten the stronger team fight right now at this moment in the game. Have you ever seen the infamous LCL surprise Baron at 23 minutes? I am about to, but there's a ward on it. They're gonna see Inax right over the wall. There's an immediate response coming through from Splice. They're, They're all up. running over. Inax is taking so much damage. This is not ideal whatsoever. The rest of them are on the way. There's no Nocturnal to ferry them safely into the pit, but 8k dropping. They can't do it fast they enough, Draco. They spot it out. This is it. They bet it all in this single moment. 4k, it's getting Edward. over the Edward trying to buy it. Can they get into the pit? They managed to take it. UOL, can they survive? How many members can get out? Three members escape with the Baron. No man's now running for the hills. He will be sacrificed, but still, they get the Baron. And three members make it out, so Splice can't teleport two down into bottom lane and try to trade that for an inhibitor. An incredible call coming through from the Unicorns of Love with the Karthus jungle so much damage over time. Once again, <laughs> once again in the mid game, the team on the back foot finds it. And the LCL classic, the surprise Baron, the blast comes over the wall. They still get spotted, but they make it work in the end. Splice will grab a tier two. They'll hold on to their gold lead, but for the next two minutes, 47 seconds and counting down, you will be able to stall to hold on to the Baron. They'll stop Splice from pushing anymore, and they may be able to take something of their own. An insult to injury is the Drake spawn that Splice get when they're in control <laughs> is the cloud to UOL's Inferno. It's just so important for Unicorns to pick up this Baron. See this play one more time. Well, eventually it will be Splice to win this fight. Or at least might again from an Anasik, but he does land it. Unicorns had the brilliant call to make that one happen. So clutch from them knowing the Drake was spawning and that Splice were resetting and scrambling to pick that one up. And now with this Baron for two minutes, the reason why this is so key is not just the standard, oh, you know, you extend the game, but you try to get yourself past some of the item spikes of Splice. You know, Rabadons and Runons just finished on the two primary carries, three items, whereas Unicorns are still scrambling to put those pieces together. So just by having this Baron and trying to stall out for that next spike to try and match your opponents, we'll try to put them on even footing for that next fight. It's just very difficult to survive those spikes, Ender. The Rabadons death cap coming in is the one I think you have to be the most scared of, because Scatter Leak is already essentially a death sentence. Cinder no longer needs the support of the rest of the team. It feels like she can just one-shot a carry. There are no defensive items outside of the Saros active for either of the primary carries. The Karthus as well, just incredibly squishy. And Humanoid about to hit level 16 as well, so if you thought he was strong now, just wait till he gets a couple extra hundred damage on that R button. Going to be absolutely massive. And that's the struggle for Unicorns. No true front line to step forward and absorb the pressure of a Syndra, some defensive tools, but once those are down, things become very, very hairy for them. They can't start off fights on their own. They need to rely on Splice over committing into them, and that's why making sure they can't have the Baron to siege where Splice would never have to force a fight on you is so crucial. And here we are once again, Splice in control of the game. Their lead not as commanding as it has been in the past, but they're in a position where all they need to do with this advantage, turn it into a major objective and close the game. But this is not as big of a lead as we've seen Splice have in this series and end up losing. Everyone remembers that game one. Unicorns fans will be saying, why can't it happen in game five? Why can't it happen one more time? We got that early Baron. We stalled out the game. But Splice still with so many powerful tools of their own. How many times in League of Legends history has a single shockwave decided a series? Single pick, single moment. One of them's going to happen in this game may have already happened if you're a Splice fan. They may have already found the lead that they need to yeah. close. We're going to have to see what can Unicorns of Love do. They've spotted. They push forward to threaten visit Chachi. Someone's going to have to grab that CS. Looks like they will give it to Boss. I love that you call out the Shockwave because there's no setup for him. Maybe a Wall of Pain can try to help you. 
<laughs> stop people from escaping, but it's so hard. No Man's has to be so, so on point with that ability because it carries so much of the team, white, team fight weight for the Unicorns. You think of their available CC on-demand tools. It's not really there. You have Feathers, but you need to set them up. You have Edward, but that route isn't guaranteed right off the bat. You have to wait for it. It's really just No Man's with the ability to instantly turn a fight. And the good news for UOL is that they have the freedom of worrying on his ball to check some of these bushes as well as the Wall of Pain. You can see Humanoid doing the same thing with the Dark Sphere. So both sides very wary of the potential pick, of the potential death brush. And similar to what we saw from UOL earlier in the series, as they fall behind and lose all the towers outside of the base, switching over to a lot more blue trinkets. And I think this is a very smart adaptation for them. They have three. I believe in game one it was. They picked up four for themselves to make sure they could scout that Baron will be very important for them in a minute 45 seconds when that does spawn. And you can see how they're covering their side laners too. When, when No Man's goes to the bottom lane to step up and CS, that is very forward of him. I think maybe more forward than he needs to be, but Edward was right behind him to offer a black shield. So they're just trying to funnel more and more resources into these carries. We saw No Man's in game number one on the Kale on that incredible late game scaling carry show up when it mattered, flash forward in those team fights. Oh, the execution is just so much harder, though. It's so much harder. It's actually without, like, an Alistar or any of the dream setups. You've mentioned it already. It's just... Yeah. Because Kale, you just right-click. Yeah, you right? just right-click. Like, and like, you, know, you know you have that consistent damage. I right-click you. With Orion, it is one ability. And if you whiff that, it's over. If you nail, if you nail it, you may, you're, maybe you're just win the game. It's maybe you just one, go on to It's an iconic League of Legends moment. It's the moment where you knock the LAC third seed out and you move LCL up in the group. It's only happened one time before. 2017. HKA. HKA. But we've been in Game 5 situations before. Players on this stage, Edward in Game 5 last year on Gambit versus Cloud9. Felt the taste of defeat in that final moment. And of course, the game not in his favor right now. But you better believe he does not want to taste that defeat again. Ooh, and during, the later and later we get, the more the stakes raise. It's hard. Because you know that they're taking time, they're farming. The mice tonight might not happen for another five minutes. It could also happen in the next 30 seconds, and you just don't know. But here's the thing. No Man's has now finished his Rabadon's death cap, and Wakabi is still separated by an entire item over Inax. That death cap could be so pivotal. An Anasek 2 closing Edward. in on that item. Looking with the bindings. Black shield. Oh. Edward is going to walk miss. away. Cersei can come over the wall here. Has the water blade. The flash in. They're looking to kick the fight off, boss. The main focus at first, not the targets that they're looking for. They're fishing, they find the Orianna. No Man's gonna be able to survive, but just barely flashes out. Ulti coming in now, No Man's still, of course, still shock shockwave wave available. Keep your eyes on it. It's just one, that's not enough. Still, unicorns do survive, but look at this. Boss is chunked, he has the TP to get back into the fight. A Nanasic, hardly any mana left on this Karthus. It's the problem with these extended fights. They don't have an Ocean Drake, he doesn't have a blue buff to keep topped off, so the rest of Splice are gonna walk back while Humanoid and Norskaren zone away the Unicorns to make it so there's no possible chance that a Nanasic can try to steal. Here comes the TP, the Requiem up and available. Edward just getting chunked out. Humanoid, oh! kill, he'll find it, but Humanoid may just go down. The heal takes him out to safety. The Baron has dropped in the favor of Splice, and Unicorns of Love will get nothing back. Unicorns can't sneak a second one away from Splice. Splice, no, could be coming. They're ready for it this time around. Three minutes. Three minutes they have to try and break open the base. We've seen Unicorns, they don't have the tools to try and fight back to try to initiate against Splice. And now Splice have the Baron. Splice do not have to force a team fight. All they have to do is walk those minions into the tower, let Kabe and Humanoid hit those structures, knock them down, get a Mountain Drake to make it even easier. And here we go. Can they hold? We said they have no setup for the fight, but now Splice has to come for them. Unicorns of Love backs against the wall. Double death caps now finished. You're playing off a single binding, a single shockwave from the Unicorns of Love. If you can find a pick and slow this game down, delay the Baron, that's what you need. If you can't, you're looking at losing one, maybe two inhibitors in the next couple of minutes. Whatever you do, you cannot get picked inside your jungle, outside of your base, you must hold on. Most you can hope for, take one member out, buy a bit more time. Edward really has to be careful here. No Man's doing what he can to clear the mid wave. Baron buff stopping. Without No Man's there, they can't threaten anything. So Kabe can step forward and hit the tower. Now they run up, but they can't do no much. Man. Still fishing for Humanoid. Aldi goes out, tries to get the follow ups done. Humanoid now in trouble. Humanoid He's going forward. Humanoid is not going to get No, no, no. Here it comes. That's going to be it. The shutdown.
so crucial from No Man's and right there. Now they're looking for the Edward wants to kick this one off. The Binding Lands, Kave, all eyes on the AD carry. The last source of damage, Cersei, fishing for the flank. No Man's so low on the backside. No Man's should be set to fall. The dash forward, the flash, and he takes out one. He tries to push him back, but he misses. He misses the ult. Kabe now unstoppable. UOL will live to fight another day. Cersei looks for the assassination instead of the massive AOE on the side of Unicorns. Unicorns are fighting back just barely. No Man's with the outplay in the mid lane to get that kill onto Humanoid. We take a look one more time. He's at a level disadvantage. But he does find Humanoid with the Shockwave. Sometimes all it takes is that Shockwave onto one member, I suppose. Black Shield to make sure he can't get stunned through. And even with the Zonias, you can see Orianna chucks out her ball and backs away. Cinder cannot do the same. Just could have been a disaster, but manages to make it work. And here in the fight, is the guy you got to watch. As great as Kabe looks on the front line. The ulti just whiffs. Difference is Kabe can't get auto attacks down. Unicorns love chasing on forward. And we say in these long fights, but you can get through some of the priority members of Splice. That's where Unicorns come online, where their damage seems to never end, with a Karthus and Isaiah pumping it out from range. He's got the Oriana as well. Offers a more supportive take, too, in the right situations. The death cap completed, Christy. Level 16 coming through. Well, I mean, we're full late game. We absolutely are. I mean, and, and we should have expected nothing less. In all honesty, 20 seconds left on the Baron. That's not going to amount to much of anything. But we have Elder Dragon spawning. We have Baron spawning one more time. Unicorns and Splice just going to be licking their wounds until that one comes up. Of course, that bot lane inhibitor has been left exposed, but no real split push threat on the side of Splice means we won't be seeing them rush for that objective anytime soon. And the Baron, of course, falls away. It will be a few minutes until we see it again. And now Void Staff has come in as well for the Orianna. And you can see Humanoid, he was so strong earlier on, but he has to buy more and more defensive items at this point. Luckily for him, really not much MR on the opposite side. No man knows his chances at winning this game are not about surviving. It's about finding a single clutch Shockwave. And the goal difference, very close throughout the entirety of the game. And you would think that as Splice start to ramp up, as they hit that 5k mark, that they'd be confidently in the lead. But once again, if there's anything we've learned in the series, is the game's really not over until you kill the Nexus. Yeah. And it's down to just about 4,000 at this point. The scaling threats from Unicorns continue to get stronger. You think the three-man core of Karthus, Oriana, Zaya going to be much stronger than Xersei. Xersei really going to be struggling to get into fights on the Kiana. That's what you find so often in these late game scenarios. Sure, one ultimate can be the deal breaker there, but it becomes much more difficult on a relatively slow, uh, short range champion to close the gap on a Zaya on an Oriana. And now we wait. Elder Drake spawning at the same time as Baron roughly. Splice with full control on bot side jungle. That's what they're going to look for first. Can probably send back Kabe to solo that out while the rest of the team looks to zone and make sure that Unicorns can't start up the Baron by themselves. And Unicorns, how do you walk into the jungle? You, it doesn't feel like you really can. You have to wait until you know they're on the objective. That's why they have all the blue orbs to try and spot out and get that information. Zersei looking for that opportunity, hoping that he catches someone out, but the team not ready to follow up. Kabe now full build as well. Finished off the Mal Mal Mardius against all the AP threat on the side of Unicorn. It's going to be so valuable here. Making the Void Staff even more important for No Man's. Level 16 achieved for both of our junglers. Much more damage on both those ultimates. Maybe a Nanasek can find that R that he's been looking for all game long. And he's on the way to a Void Staff as well. There's the TP coming mid lane. UOL stepping forward. They think they've spotted out Xerse. His ult goes down early. The rest of the team now needs to retreat, though. They can't afford to get caught out. Vizachachi in the middle of everyone. And Anasek now pulling back. That's the TP used. They get really not much for it. And Xerse lost his ultimate. Yes, they get the flash on an Anasek, but the ultimate from Xerse going to be so crucial in the next 20 seconds with both of these objectives spawning. Boss not able to get back to base, doesn't have the TP quite yet, so he's going to be walking into the river, low on HP already, but Unicorns, this must be their moment to fight around an objective. Set up so good for Spice, however. They're walking straight into the funnel. Humanoid's going to find the stun. That's going to be burned out. Elder Drake is now gone, and they have a huge fight. It's Kabe! He's the backside. Is it going to be enough? Kabe, he's dead! Down. Shut down! That could be the difference maker! Still an Odyssey alive. The ultimate coming out now. How many members are going to drop? Zerse needs to turn this one around. Humanoid goes golden at the perfect time. Now needs to escape. No man's so incredibly low. Eyes of the Dark Sphere. Where's it going to go? The shutdown comes through. And that's it. Splice have won the fight. Can they end the game? Perfect play from Zerse over the wall to close the gap and get the kills. The death timers are simply too long, Dracos. 37 minutes into the game. In game.
and five after Silver Scrapes. Splice are pushing uncontested into the Unicorn Nexus. And with their backs against the wall, against former friends in Sheepy, when push comes to shove in the moments that matter most here in the 2019 play and Splice show up. Splice eliminate the Unicorns of Love and the LCL, and they move on to the main stage. A grueling five game series between these two teams back and forth all day long. But in the end, Splice proved that they are the better team on the day and they strike down Unicorns of Love in another game five situation. And just, I mean, just an incredible series, honestly. And I think Unicorns of Love, despite the fumbles in the final moment, should still feel proud. An impressive showing once again from the LCL, proving that they are at the forefront of many of the emerging regions. Disappointment, though, you have to feel for Edward once Absolute again. Absolute heartbreak. In game five again. again. First yes. it was Cloud9, now it's Splice, just barely out of his reach. After pulling back, you know, we thought maybe Splice, if they hadn't thrown the mid game in game one, maybe they win 3 0, but no unicorns come back and they push them to the absolute brink. And even that last team fight it looked like it could go either way with Kabe diving into the back line. Absolutely incredible performance from both these squads. Just, I just still can't believe how many times we went full late game, how many times it came down to one big fight or one crazy pick. And you gotta give credit to Splice. Like that final setup on Elder, there's just really no way that UOL can move in to contest, because they have to walk through a pinch to do it. And that's where the Cinder is going to be so effective. That's where the Nautilus Hall is going to hit every single member. Talk about the Cinder. Humanoid played out of his mind in this game. I think throughout the entire series, he was dominating inside of his lane, roaming around, getting kills, snowballing his teammates, and ultimately in this last game, finishing off with nine kills. Incredible. And yeah, Edward, final wave to the crowd before he walks off stage. And overall, you know, oh, just a wild way to end the plans. Uh, and it looks like uh, we're ready to go. So for more on today's action, I'm going to be hosting Cooldown. But, you know, through a weird series of events, i got to do this too. So goodbye. Bye. Bye. Have fun at World's Cooldown. <laughs>